plenty of sunshine to kick off your work week, but it is chilly out there, so you're going to need that coat. Thanks for being with us. I'm Amaka Ubaka. And I'm Madeline Hunt. Hopefully you cut that winter coat on standby, because we've seen some nice weather lately, but now we're back to that seasonal weather. Chris? And if you spent any time in New England, folks know that, hey, you can't get fooled into thinking spring is here for good in March, despite some of the milder air that we have seen. We're back to the reality of we can still bash on with the roof and outside. We're tapping on the roof. We're tapping on the roof. We're tapping on the roof. Yeah, see yeah. how far they can go. It feels like 16 in Boston. But they can make the people fucking believe. The north wind coming in at about 10 to 15 miles an hour. We look at the radar and satellite composite, and it's quiet. So we have a quiet day ahead of us with just some patches of clouds. Cool day, though. Although if you have to get outside, you know, get that morning walk in a little chilly this morning. We're heading out in the backyard with the kids today. Temperatures near 40 degrees away from the coastline, but we'll at least have dry conditions in place. That backyard forecast, you know, trying to get some of the kids to burn off the energy, you know, out around the house there. We are talking about some scattered light showers on Tuesday. The worst part of the forecast for the yard work or just being outside of the backyard with the kids is going to be on Thursday. By Friday, temperatures jump up. They'll drop down over the weekend, but will dry out as well. More than some of the forecasts ahead. Now to the latest coronavirus numbers in Massachusetts. As of this morning, there are 164 cases, 45 are confirmed, 119 are presumed. Governor Baker taking aggressive new action to try and stop the spread, including closing all schools in the state for the next three weeks. From restaurants and bars making drastic changes to more testing kits being offered and a vaccine in the works, our live Team 7 coverage begins with Carrie Carrado with more on those school closings impacting so many children around the state. Carrie. Amaka, good morning. The governor said while the students are home, he doesn't want them to treat this like a summer vacation. He wants to practice that social distancing and making sure that everyone is just staying, staying on that safe side. Now, today, students, wow. they will head back to school, gather any necessary supplies they may need before they head on break. Governor Baker taking quick action after he says there is evidence of community transmission in seven Massachusetts counties. The facts on the ground have changed. He wasted no time closing schools this Tuesday until at least April 7th. I'm ordering a three-week suspension of school operations for educational purposes at all public and private elementary and secondary schools. As for Boston schools, Mayor Marty yeah. Walsh says students can return to their classrooms to get necessary school supplies, lesson plans from teachers, Chromebooks, and medications to hold them over during the public health crisis. The mayor says the city will not forget the Boston children who strictly rely on free school breakfast and lunch. We're committed to feeding our students throughout this period. Starting Tuesday, families can pick up a variety of, of packaged meal options at dozens of locations across Boston every day from 8.30 to 11. The governor of New Hampshire announcing schools will also close their doors. Students there will resort to remote learning. The governor tweeting about his decision, saying, quote, There are a few moments in one's life that are truly transformational and important as one's education. And we are doing everything we can to ensure kids can still receive the education they deserve. Northeastern University confirming one of its students has tested positive for coronavirus. School officials say the student lived in off-campus housing and has been in isolation since Thursday. And those school officials are also going to make sure and look around at see who may have come in contact with that person who was infected. We're live in Boston this morning. Carrie Corrado, 7 News, Today in New England. Starting tomorrow, there's no dining out. New rules forcing restaurants to only serve takeout. City leaders announcing the changes after seeing people lining up outside of bars during St. Patrick's Day weekend. Some establishments voluntarily shutting their doors wow. on Sunday. That's, Seven Mac, Yoshida that's in crazy. In Boston, but the changes we could see. Wow. Michael. Wow. Yeah, Governor Baker making a big announcement yesterday saying that uh, starting tomorrow, bars and restaurants across the state, well, they can no longer be open for in-dining service. They can only do takeout or delivery. And that's leaving many workers feeling uncertain about the next few weeks. Yeah. Coronavirus concerns causing big changes to the service industry. Governor Baker announcing that starting Tuesday, restaurants and bars will close and only allow takeout and delivery. We thought we were going to work all week, and all of a sudden now we don't know what's going to happen after Tuesday. Megan Ball works at the Union Oyster House. Normally, this time of year, she'd be bringing in more cash. But now she's dealing with the evolving outbreak. Honestly, just, like, making sure I can get my bills paid. But it's not just restaurants and bars. 
Governor Baker also announcing other actions being taken to prevent the further spread of the virus. Gatherings of more than 25 people will not be allowed. However, pharmacies and supermarkets will remain open. Establishments must also follow the social distancing protocols set forth in the Department of Public Health guidance. Crowds gathered in South Boston on Saturday ahead of St. Patrick's Day raised concerns. So on Sunday, 14 South Boston bars voluntarily closed after working with city leaders to deter people from being in close contact. Doing our city over the next week or two will make big impacts on the local trajectory of this outbreak and our hospital's ability to handle it. It will save lives. The governor says plans are in place to ease and expand unemployment claims to try and help workers impacted by closures. Especially my fiance, so he's, he's freaking out a little bit, so I'm trying to calm him down, and, like, try to stay calm and just like figure out the next step. But by now, we all have to take one day at a time. You know, I've been here 41 years. This is the first time ever happened since I've been here. Never. So sad. And these restrictions are set to last several weeks with the governor's office saying that restaurants and bars will be able to resume normal operations on April 6th. Live in Boston this morning, Mike Lucia, 7 News, today in New England. And breaking news involving the stock market futures down more than 1,000 points this morning. The Federal Reserve cutting interest rates to near zero, but that just wasn't enough to comfort investors. Late last night futures dropping the maximum 5%, hitting a limit down, so that means that they cannot fall any further. Across the nation, the Center for Disease Control confirming more than 1,600 cases and 41 deaths. We could be closer to having a vaccine for the coronavirus. Today, the first clinical trial will begin. Patients will get a dose of the vaccine developed by Moderna. That's a company in Cambridge. In the meantime, several states are enforcing curfews and announcing more closures. Seven's John Coco is live in the newsroom with the latest details. John. Well, the vice president says there'll be new guidelines released this morning regarding potential curfews or closures with the goal continuing to be containing coronavirus. With the coronavirus still posing a serious threat. As I said many times and I'll repeat it, the worst is yes ahead for us. The pandemic gripping the world has U.S. officials working to respond to the health crisis. We're using the full power of the federal government to defeat the coronavirus and we will do whatever it takes and we're doing I think, really really well the vice president says as of today more than 2,000 labs are coming online to do testing uh, we will now have access in the days ahead to more than 2,000 labs across the country that have the equipment today to process coronavirus tests uh, much more rapidly and a much higher volume for the American people the president says he spoke to the CEOs of Target Walmart, and a dozen other food supply companies about their response to the crisis and their response to consumer demand for things like hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, and toilet paper. You don't have to buy so much. Take it easy. Just relax. People are going in and they're buying more. They, I remember, uh, I guess during the conversation, Doug of Walmart said that they're buying more than they buy at Christmas. Relax. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends canceling or postponing events that have 50 or more people for the next eight weeks. There's a push for social distancing. It is how we respond to that challenge that's going to determine what the ultimate endpoint is going to be. Schools in more than 30 states have shut their doors. Large gatherings are banned in some states, including California and New York, while bars and restaurants in some states are closing early. Illinois is shutting them down completely to dining customers until the end of the month. I tried earlier this week to appeal to everyone's good judgment to stay home, to avoid bars, not to congregate in crowds. It's unfortunate that many people didn't take that seriously. The first participant in a clinical trial for a vaccine to protect against coronavirus will receive an experimental dose today. Live in the news of John Coco, 7 News, Today New England. And a U.S. sailor serving on the USS Boxer is tested positive for coronavirus. The Navy has quarantined that sailor at home and is isolating anyone who has come in close contact with that individual. A second Marine at an air base in California has also tested positive. And the U.S. Peace Corps suspending operations worldwide. Volunteers have already been evacuated from China and Mongolia because of the outbreak. The Peace Corps director says that the health and safety of volunteers is the highest priority.
Our coronavirus coverage doesn't stop here. People across the country stocking up on groceries, but officials say that's not necessary. More details on supplies coming up. And if you need help getting answers, there are resources available to, to you. Look at your screen. State health officials say they've set up a call line. Anyone can call 211 with any questions about the coronavirus. And the city of Boston says anyone living within the city limits can call 311. The attorney general says her office will help anyone who's facing problems with missing work and sure. quarantine. You can call the Fair Labor Hotline. Their number is 617-727-3465. We're following some breaking news out of Springfield, Missouri. Police say five people are dead, including a police officer, after a gunman opens fire at a gas station. The police chief says a car crashed into a gas station store. The driver got out and started shooting people inside. Two officers were shot, one died. Three civilians were also killed. Police say that the suspect died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. A motive for the crime is under investigation. Turning now to the candidates at last night's Democratic debate, they were quick to address the coronavirus. Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders describing what they would do as president to respond to the outbreak. Now, I obviously believe in Medicare for all. I will fight for that as president. But right now, in this emergency, I want every person in this country to understand that when you get sick, you go to the doctor. When you get sick, if you have the virus, that will be paid for. I have to take care of those who, in fact, are exposed or likely to be exposed to the virus. And that means we have to do testing. We have to get the testing kits up and ready. I would have the World Health Organization. I'd take advantage of the test kits they have available to us. So Sanders and Biden also committing to choose women to be their running mates. The number of women who are qualified to be president tomorrow, I would pick a woman to be my vice president. The vice president committed to picking a woman as his running mate. If you get the nomination, will you? Uh, in all likelihood, I, I will. Uh, for me, it's not just uh, nominating uh, or, uh, a woman. It is making sure that we have a progressive women, and there are progressive women out there. Four states, including Florida and Ohio, are set to hold their primaries tomorrow. Coming up in just a few hours, negotiations will begin as Tom Brady is set to enter free agency. We have the latest on the contract conversations. And we are taking you outside on this Monday morning. The sun will shine today, but some rain is on the way. We want to focus on the beautiful shot, though. Chris Lambert has your weekday forecast straight ahead.